Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the regular planning board meeting for May 18th. Uh, before we get into the agenda, I'd just like to let everyone know that we will be having a uh, public meeting next Thursday, May 25th at 7 o'clock, just to let everybody know that. Um, starting tonight on the public hearings, application A, the application of Bachman Enterprises, Inc., owner for property located at 140 Edmond Avenue, wherein a conditional use permit is requested as allowed in Article 6, Section 10-608B of the Zoning Ordinance to improve on-site parking spaces, retaining walls and landscaping within an inland wetlands protection district. Said property is shown on Assessor Plan 220 as Lot 81 and lies within a single residence B district. This application was previously tabled at the April 20th, 2006 Planning Board meeting. Do I have a motion to take it off the table? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed in the chair votes aye. Who's here tonight on behalf of the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Bernie Pilich. I'm here on behalf of uh, the applicant, Backman Enterprises. Also with me is uh, Dr. Paul Bacon, uh, one of the principals of Backman Enterprises. Uh, this is, site is uh, 140 Edmonds Avenue. It has been an existing chiropractic office for uh, over 20 years. And what is being proposed is some reconfiguration of the parking and actually <clears throat> an improvement to an existing uh, area that has been constructed within a 100-foot wetland buffer. The 100-foot wetland buffer is measured from the wetlands which are actually across Edmonds Avenue. So Edmonds Avenue, <clears throat> because of its elevation and its, uh, its configuration, forms a natural barrier between this site and, and the wetlands. There is another smaller wetlands here which is not a jurisdictional wetlands. Uh, because Edmond Avenue is here, nothing can flow in this direction and everything. This is I-95, by the way, and there's quite a steep slope from I-95 down. Everything flows in this direction <clears throat> and then ultimately down into this area. Presently, there is an asphalt parking area in this, this location. Um, all of that asphalt is going to be removed and returned to a, a pervious gravel surface. We're talking about 1,200 square foot reduction in impervious surface uh, on the site by reclaiming this area, turning it back into, uh, changing it from hot top to, to gravel. In addition, we are placing a, uh, a strip of uh, basically a large French drain in this area, uh, which is an infiltration basin two feet by two feet of crushed stone which will uh, allow uh, runoff to uh, accumulate in the, in the infiltration basin and, and, again, reduce the rate of flow onto uh, the abutting property. We appeared before the Conservation Commission, and they wholeheartedly endorsed this, and I think that probably if you've had a chance to review the minutes, they speak for themselves. They did place a condition upon um, their rec favorable, unanimous favorable recommendation, and that was that this is city-owned property here. There is an area <clears throat> right now that is gravel where cars have, have parked in the past. They wanted some delineation so that that will not occur in the future. And we agreed to put up a 24-foot uh, fence along here, which is a cedar post and rail fence with some boulders, and to do some wetlands plantings, uh, planted wetlands type plantings in here uh, to reclaim that gravel area and to put some uh, native wetland species in there uh, to improve its, uh, its uh, not only its appearance, but its wetlands buffer function. I believe you have in your packet an, uh, a, some correspondence from Applegarth Garden Design talking about those wetland buffer plantings that are going in there. And basically, we're proposing that. We're proposing to take the pavement out of here. This is a newly, a newly created gravel parking area. Um, but we're, what we're basically saying is we, we've got a 1,200-square-foot uh, reduction in the impervious uh, surface. 
we're making a, a, what is an existing situation much better than, than what exists now. I think that probably the uh, Conservation Commission understood that, and that's the reason that they, they endorsed this uh, pretty wholeheartedly. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Any questions from the board? Mr. Coker. Uh, Bernie, you made reference to a letter. Um, I don't see it in my packet. Copy lying around, or did, did we not have it in the packet? Or? The Apple Goth Garden design letter, you don't have that? Unless it just if you don't, be. I've got it right here, Don. I'll, I'll circulate it. It explains the three type of plantings, a shad blow, service berry, and uh, half-high blueberry plantings that are going to be they be put in there and, and why they're suitable. I'm sorry. I thought that was in the packet. While you're reading that, any other questions? For the applicant? Anyone else want to? No, when you're done, just make sure you pass it down. You, you all set, Mr. Coker? I am. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, thank you. No other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Anybody in the public wish to speak to, for, or against this application? Anybody in the public to, for, or against? Third time, seeing no one rise, I will now close the public hearing. It's your pleasure, board. I'll move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I just Discussion have a on the motion, yes. Yes, just a question for staff as to whether the planning staff, particularly Peter Britz, have reviewed and blessed these plantings that are proposed. Uh, maybe Peter could address that, please. I have seen the letter and, and the plantings look good to me. I was just pleased that they kept the parking out of the city property and we're going to restore that area. It was pretty pretty beat up with the parking and that wetland there is more of a concern than the jurisdictional wetland on the other side of the street. So it's a, it's a good effort on the applicant. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Mr. Coker. A uh, question for, I guess, Rick. Um, in terms of procedurally inspections as this project goes forward, um, I guess in 25 words or less, uh, how, right. Does the department go out and inspect it according to the plans and make sure that everything that is proposed is done and everything that is um, on the plans is in fact done? Is that part of, is that what you do? Typically that's under the jurisdiction of DPW. And I can add that this is subject to site review so there will be a bond and uh, there will be an inspection. Okay. But it will come out of Department of Public Works. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay. Any other further questions? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the chair votes aye. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to <laughs> item B, the application of Stephen Kelm, owner, for property located at 46 State Street. We're in preliminary and final subdivision approval is requested to subdivide one lot into two lots with the following. Proposed lot A having 1,570 square feet and 22.41 feet of continuous street frontage on State Street. And proposed lot B having 2,720 square feet and 38.10 feet of continuous street frontage on State Street. And lying in a zone where a minimum lot area of 1,000 square feet and no street frontage is required. Said property is shown on Assessor Plan 105 as Lot 11 and lie within the Central Business B District, Downtown Overlay District, and Historic District A. Plat plan is on file in the Planning Department Office and is identified as Plan 060106. This application was tabled at the April 20th, 2006 Planning Board meeting. Do I have a motion to take it off the table? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chair, um, I don't know if I should recuse myself. Uh, in the past, this applicant has been a client of my company. Um, I don't know if he is now. I guess I should ask, or I, I can step down. If I think I would step down. Okay, I'm going to step down. Okay. I'll ask the question again and take it off the table. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the chair votes aye. Um, my understanding is the applicant may be requesting that this application be withdrawn. That's correct. The application number or letter B, uh, we are withdrawing and uh, we'll be presenting item C in, uh, instead of application item B. Accordingly, then, the department would recommend that you table item B to a time indefinite. So moved. Second. 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 Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the chair votes aye. And also before uh, you open C, uh, I believe our newest member of the board is here, if you wish to acknowledge John. Oh, Tim. <laughs> Tim Forty, welcome. Thank you. Who's Sorry now, I'm late. Who's now our second alternate, who currently will be our first alternate with no, Jerry. Actually, may be voting <laughs> in the absence of Ray, Will, and Oh, that's Tom. right. Well, welcome, Tim. Thank you very much. You're voting. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you read your packet. Um, <laughs> moving on to item C, the application of Stephen Calmoner for property located at 46 State Street in March 22 LLC owner for property located at 58 State Street. We're in preliminary and final subdivision approval. Lot line revision is requested between two lots having the following. Lot 11 is shown on Assessor Plan 105, decreasing an area from 4,303 square feet to 2,733 square feet and decreasing in continuous street frontage off State Street from 60.51 feet to 38.10 feet. And Lot 2 is shown on Assessor Plan 105, increasing an area from 1,810 square feet to 3,380 square feet and increasing in continuous street frontage off of State Street from 26 feet to 48.41 feet. Said lots lie in a zone where a minimum lot area of 1,000 square feet and no continuous street frontage is requirement. Said properties are shown on Assessor Plan 105 as lots 11 and 12 and lie within a central business B and historic A district. Who's here tonight on behalf of the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, John Shagman from Ambit Engineering, representing Stephen Kelm and also March 22 LLC. The proposal <coughs> you have before you is to relocate a lot line between map 105, lot 11, and map 105, lot 12, also known as 46 and 58 State Street down the, the Memorial Bridge end. Basically, we're going to move the lot line, which currently runs along the building line of number 58 State Street, and we're going to move it over so that it would run along the building line of 46 State Street. What we're proposing to do is relocate the existing line to the east so that it would run along 46 State Street. Now this project is an area where there is an opening onto State Street, an existing driveway. If you've been by, the driveway services 46 State Street and actually has, provides access to a covered parking area underneath the deck to the rear of the structure. As a part of this uh, proposal, uh, and I'm going to get into the bigger picture as we move forward here, but what you see is the first step. As a part of this proposal, there will be an access easement created to access this parking area from Court Street. So just keep that in mind. And in the package that you should have, there was a, an, a, an easement deed that deed has been executed by the abutter at map uh, 105, lot 6. And there's also an easement, access and utility easement plan that uh, shows the area that would, that is a part of this easement that has been granted to both 105.11 and both and 105.12. So this easement here will provide access to the rear of both of these lots. 
and that's shown on the plan. You also should have in your packet a rear elevation of looking at the back of this property from Court Street. And uh, this was a part of an HDC application which um, has been uh, brought to the HDC and reviewed and actually voted on and approved at their May meeting. So I've included from that application, and for your benefit, two other or four other plans, which are two other picture views. The first being the view as you look to the uh, towards the east, further up State Street, and what you see now is a structure, 58 State Street. That structure is approved for demolition as a part of the HDC application. So that structure is going to be removed, and between uh, the next building to the west and 46 State Street, a new building will be constructed. That new building will take up the entire frontage area between uh, the building to the west of 58 and 46. You also have uh, the view looking for Memorial Bridge showing the same thing. There's 56 State Street, and then there's the space with a <coughs> curb cut, and then 58 State Street. And the proposal is going to be to demolish, uh, take down 58, and rebuild across this entire area between 46 and the building to the west of 58, a new structure. We believe that this future project is consistent with the master plan. It is going to have first floor commercial use and residential use above, so it's a mixed use building. It is going to have underground parking, which will be accessed from the Court Street side. It will also free up, close a curb cut, and provide at least one new parking space on State Street. Uh, we believe that with some restriping, we might be able to get two new spaces on State Street. We understand, though, that the department has some concerns, and they've been outlined in the memo to you folks. So I wanted to just go through and, and try to address those. Uh, what we're seeking tonight, in the end, is we're asking for, for you to grant us a preliminary approval so that we might move through to the next step of the planning process and uh, file our site plans and uh, work with the Technical Advisory Committee and the city staff at addressing all these issues. But we need to uh, take this step in order to go forward through the site review process. The department's concerns are, first, that the tax map shows a structure that is across the whole lot. And Uh, David's correct in that uh, statement there. However, what happened is to the rear of 58 uh, State Street, there was a one-story structure at one time. It is now gone. It was taken down as a part of an application that was brought before the city for this property and, and the property to the south that received all the requisite approvals. Um, the building was taken down, and we're doing a different, slightly different proposal. The previous one did keep this building uh, as a part of the uh, features of that site redevelopment, but in our opinion, that, that building is not structurally safe, and, and we are uh, desirous of taking it down, and we have gotten the HTC approval for that. The second concern was that we are going to De demolish this structure and this uh, take off this deck and those items uh, were approved by the HDC so um, we do have some 
impetus to move forward with this as a result of that uh, review. The third concern is that there will be a zero side yard and we are aware that we would need to meet the international uh, building code uh, requirements. This structure here has been reviewed uh, code-wise and there are windows on this side, on the west side currently, but the uh, structure will still be, uh, will still meet the codes at the point when those are uh, closed to allow the construction of the building along the entire frontage. Uh, number four is that uh, the access and egress to this structure is possible now that the line is moved to the east and uh, we would agree with the department that that's uh, something that uh, we need to look at in the planning process. And the fifth one is again uh, regarding structures and uh, demolition and the fact that we haven't identified easement areas on this lot uh, for this lot and that's uh, a very important thing to point out. This access easement comes to uh, lot 11. If we move the property line over here, then the easement doesn't get to lot 11. But we will be providing an easement um, as a part of the uh, future plan. In fact, the access will come in here and there will be parking that heads in this way, heads in this way, and then the existing parking here. So they will be sort of served by uh, one central uh, corridor area and that will all be uh, reviewed uh, in detail in the, in the site review process. Uh, the sixth uh, concern is the curb cut onto State Street and uh, we agree that that, that uh, just doing this action could uh, potentially have uh, other ramifications. In other words, if we were to just approve this tonight and we weren't to do the project, you would actually be able to drive from State Street to Court Street across here, uh, make a new street even, sort of. Um, but that's not our intention. And that's why we're only asking tonight for the ability to move forward with the design. And we would suggest, and uh, we are in agreement that this uh, final approval of this could be directly linked to the development proposal. In other words, your approval for this lot line relocation uh, would be tied to the approval of the entire project. So this would not stand alone and that possibility uh, would not uh, uh, present itself. And then um, the seventh concern is the uh, Sort of relocation of the access to Court Street. What are the implications of that uh, on Court Street? Is that appropriate? And we agree with that, uh, that that needs some study and we would suggest that the, the technical review process is the place where that kind of study will occur and should occur at this time. So we respectfully request that we uh, be granted a preliminary approval here tonight so that we can move forward with our site review application and we look forward to working with the city to um, uh, come up with a proposal that uh, is good for the city and, and good for the applicant. If we uh, aren't able to move forward, it does cause um, a delay in that your next meeting would not be until after the site review deadline for next month. So it has a, has a ripple effect uh, of a couple of months. And uh, we would like to get moving with the planning process for this project. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Any questions for the applicant? Ms. Hayden. Um, relative to the item number seven, John, uh, I, I agree with you that TAC is the place to discuss that, but what if we grant preliminary approval tonight and then it goes to TAC and they think it's terrible to have that opening onto Court Street? Isn't that kind of a project killer, the way that it's currently subdivided? Uh, 
if that is something that, that the um, TAC committee feels isn't appropriate, then there's actually two, two things that could happen. Uh, this plan may not then be desirable, or the project can be uh, reoriented so there is no underground parking because it's not a requirement in the CBB right. to provide off-street parking. So, Thanks, John. Uh, okay, thank you. Ms. Roberts. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the rear elevation um, that was included with our packet. Yep. Is this, uh, was this the one that was approved by the HDC with the, um, it looks like sort of a garage door opening um, facing Court Street? Yes. Okay, just wanted to sort of follow up on that whole curb cut issue. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? No? Thank you. Thank you. I'll now open it up to the public. Anybody in the public wish to speak 2 4 against the application? Anybody in the public 2 4 against? Third time seeing no one rise, I'll now close the public hearing. David? Mr. Chairman, I think uh, Mr. Shagnon has given a, a good explanation of the project. However, the department still has some principal concerns, and they are primarily uh, six and seven. Uh, the easements are necessary for this application, and also the discussion of where the driveway and how the driveway would work is pertinent. Um, the department would recommend actually that you keep the public hearing open, but to table this so that the applicant and the city staff can meet and address all these issues so that you have uh, hopefully a plan in front of you that addresses all these concerns and then would facilitate your review. Uh, if this were at TAC in its present form, the lots really aren't in their final form. And that lot, let's see which one is it, lot six? I think lot six should actually be a part of this application since the easement goes over it. And as such, this application doesn't include it. So these are some of the issues that we've been struggling with, but the applicant's been very forthcoming, and I think the explanation tonight addressed a number of those concerns. But at this point, the department would still recommend, uh, would like to recommend that it be tabled to your June meeting so that we can have that meeting. Mr. Coker. And procedurally, by leaving the public hearing open, that does not start that clock ticking which john talked about it would uh, within 30 days and um so in other words it wouldn't affect uh, uh our decision making it wouldn't affect any deadlines it just simply sort of hits the hold button in essence it, it actually allows the clock to keep running mm -hmm. so it doesn't hit the hold button as you put it but if you table it, it would allow, for example, if it was determined that that lot should be in, we could advertise it so it be properly before you in June, which I suspect is what's going to have to happen. And that way it will actually def probably keep this project more or less on schedule. The TAC issues I don't, I submit are not an issue for your concern at this point. It's actually the lot lines. So just clearly understand The clock this. is running. The clock is running if we table the clock stops running. No, it continues to it run. It continues to run, yeah. all right. Which works to the applicant's benefit and the city's benefit in that we get the issues addressed quickly. Likewise, if we leave the public hearing open, the impact of that is? It allows, uh, if you do that, it allows you to allow the public to speak in case there's an interested party, for example, that comes out because lot six is involved, just as an example. Then the department's recommendation, again, is to? Table to your, I believe, June 15th meeting. I believe you. that's the day. This is the one day. Nobody's jumping up. Yes. <laughs> it's June 15th. So. Ms. Hayden. Yeah, I think those are good points. I mean, John did a great job of addressing the, the beginning mm -hmm. items, but seven uh, particularly concerns me and, and also six. So I think that's a good approach. Got a motion? That's a motion. Motion to table to June 15th. Second. Moved and second. And just what, in, so the applicant's direction is to immediately meet with staff. Right. 
Yes. yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes. My suggestion would be as what I would interpret from this tabling is for the applicant to meet with staff to address all seven items, if necessary, to amend the application to include any lot and re-advertise it if appropriate, and to hopefully come back in the June meeting with a department recommendation. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Should we keep these plants? Yes. Okay. Probably a good idea. Moving on to application D. The application of Strawberry Bank, Inc. owner for property located at 17 Hancock Street. We're in preliminary and final subdivision approval is requested to subdivide one lot into two with the following. Proposed lot 000 having 6,245 square feet and 100 feet of street frontage on Hancock Street and proposed lot 001 having 4,116 square feet and 83.49 feet of street frontage on Hancock Street and 43.57 feet of street frontage on Washington Street and lying in a zone where a minimum lot area of 7,500 square feet and 100 feet of street frontage is required. Said property is shown on Assessor Plan 103 as Lot 88 and lies within a mixed residential office in Historic District Historic District A District. Who is here tonight on behalf of the applicant? Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I'm Peter Lachlan. I'm here tonight with Larry Yerden, the president of Strawberry Bank. And uh, this is, as you've indicated, a two-lot subdivision, basic goal being to uh, end up with each of the structures uh, on the two structures on the lot to have each one end up uh, on its own lot. And <clears throat> the, um, well, I guess, uh, the, Rather than go through a long explanation for this, at this point, um, what, I'd, what I would request is that this matter be tabled and that we be directed to go to the Board of Adjustment, which we need to do to get a variance. And uh, in the meantime, we would work with the staff on the parking layout and uh, the sidewalk layout and any other issues uh, so that uh, uh, when it comes back, I would guess maybe at your July meeting, everything will be in final order. If you'd like a lengthy, boring presentation, I can do that tonight, or you can save it till the next time. Okay. Um, before we do that, let's open up to the public. Um, anybody in the public wish to speak to, for, or against the application? If you'd like to come up to the podium, your name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Maria Danahill, and I have a house on Gates Street. And my lot abuts the two lots in question. And particularly since I might not be here for the entire month of July, I wonder if I could ask for a short version <laughs> of um, your plans for, these, for this lot. I'd be happy to do that all right after the meeting right now. Yeah. Whatever the that, that'd be fine. council prefers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If you want Thank me you. In. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to speak to, for, or against? Mr. Chairman, I suggest since we're tabling it, you keep the public hearing open. We'll do the same thing like we've done before. Okay. Yes. Um, seeing no one rise for the third time. We'll uh, discussion by the board, and perhaps it'll end up in the table. Correct. Any discussion from the board? Any motion? Make a motion to table to June 15th. So, second. Moved and seconded. And that includes the recommendation for staff to assist the applicant in getting to the Board of Adjustment? It does. Correct. And we'll keep the public hearing open. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Mr. Chair, <laughs> if we're going to go with application E next, I'm going to step down again. Okay, we are. We you are. Just don't want to do anything. We are going right. application. I didn't even the Tim, again, you'll you'll be Wrong. voting on this application. 
<laughs> Welcome again. I hope you've read, hope you've read your packet. <laughs> Moving on to item E, the application of Kearsarge Mill Condominium Association, owner, for property located at 361 Hanover Street, wherein amended site review approval is requested. One, to amend easements regarding access between this lot and abutting lot owned by Hill Hanover Group, shown on Assessor Plan 138 as Lot 64. Item two, to allow a parking easement from the City of Portsmouth for abutting property, shown on Assessor Plan 138 as Lot 60. Item three, to grant an access easement to the City of Portsmouth to allow them to maintain and repair a building locating, located on abutting property, shown on Assessor Plan 138 as Lot 60 with related paving, utilities, landscaping, drainage, and associated site improvements. Said property is shown on Assessor Plan 138 as Lot 63 and lies within the Central B District. Who's here tonight on behalf of the applicant? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sharon Summers. I'm an attorney with Donahue, Tucker, and Chandela. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Also with me tonight is uh, Jim Warner, who's the president of the Kearsarge Mill Condo Association. Um, he's here to address any questions which you may have about the historical use of this property. Um, also, uh, with apologies to Dirk, is uh, Dirk Rodenheis, um, if I hope I got that name somewhat correctly, um, with HDA Kimball Chase, who can answer any questions which you might have about the plan. Um, this is uh, some of an unusual plan that you have before you tonight, and that there are no um, site changes on the plan and no changes in the operations. I think that's probably the first thing that you should know in. Um, looking at this plan and um, taking it under consideration. The reason that we're here is that the plan um, was originally approved by this board back in 1986. I have brought a copy of the, um, the plan that was approved in 1986. That is down leaning against the floor. Um, the only two areas that are of concern to you tonight are the two areas that are, that are marked in blue on this plan down on the floor. Um, <clears throat> We are here because in the recent past, um, one of the abutters um, decided to develop their property, specifically this abutter here, uh, Hill Hanover Group, LLC. And in connection with their development proposal, certain questions came to light um, concerning um, this right of way right here and concerning how to best clarify this. So that's the reason that we're here. I think what I'd like to do at this point is just to walk you through the approved plan back in 1986 and walk, walk you through what we're proposing to do on this amended site plan tonight. Um, in the first instance, the approved plan you will see has a um, right of sort of an oddly shaped right of way here, which is cross hatched. This is essentially a connector from Hill Street to Hanover Street. The second thing that you will see that's just marked on this plan, but which was not physically marked on the 1986 plan, are a series of parking spaces which are in the rear of the main Kearsarge Mill building and um, which are located on city property immediately in front of an old, it's essentially a storage building at this point for DPW. What we propose tonight um, and this is, again, in conjunction, this has been brought to light by the development proposal of the uh, um, abutters, is that you will notice on this plan there are six parking spaces that are along this, this line. That was approved in 1986, that configuration, in spite of the fact that there was a deeded right-of-way for this property here, allowing access to and from this property to get to Hanover Street. Um, it's unclear to me why the plan was approved in that fashion, but nonetheless it was. So our purpose here tonight is to try to clarify and rectify that situation. We propose to do so, and we have done so with agreement of these people who are the holder of the easement, by agreeing to grant them a new easement, which will be a blanket access easement, allowing them to get from Hill Street to Hanover Street but not necessarily, obviously we don't want them driving over the parked cars. So in return for granting them a blanket access easement over our property to get from Hill Street to Hanover Street, they in turn are going to release any right that they have in this depicted easement. 
So at the end of the day, they are going to retain their access easement. It just won't be in the place where it's currently located. And in turn, the parking configuration that was approved in 1986 will remain in place. That, in a nutshell, is what we propose with regard to that one piece. Um, as TAC noted when I met with them on May 2nd, that is essentially uh, an issue as between two abutters. And the two abutters are in agreement on this. Um, we've had extensive discussions with um, Hill Hanover and their attorney, and we're working you know, on <clears throat> getting that all squared away. Um, we've been before um, the ZBA in conjunction with the abutters to, to assist them in their development plans. So in essence, this is a consensually based um, arrangement. Um, now, with regard to the other area of, of uh, interest here, and that is this area in the back. Um, what happened on this is that as part of the um, oh, I should add, too, before I forget, one other point. Uh, when we met with TAC, uh, one of the things that um, was pointed out was that the fire chief had been contacted, um, or not the fire chief, but the uh, Steve Griswold, the TAC representative, and he has no concerns about this proposed um, uh, release of this easement and the, the granting of the blanket easement, no concerns in terms of emergency vehicles continuing to be able to come and go across the property. So that's not an issue. Um, with regard to the parking in the rear, in 1986, as part of the approval, what happened was that, <clears throat> and again, Jim Warner is here to discuss this if you have any questions. As part of the site approval, there was a discussion amongst city officials, including what was then um, City Planning Director Craig Wheeler, about um, the desire and the need to have um, Kearsarge Mill be able to park in these spaces back here um, but which are technically located on city property. The city agreed to this arrangement, um, and they said that in return for that, we had to maintain that area back there, which was on city property. We have done that for the past 20 years, and um, as I have indicated uh, in response to inquiries by Attorney Sullivan, um, we have expended over $100,000 in the last 20 years to pave, uh, to plow, to generally maintain back there and also to main some, maintain some landscaping in that general vicinity as well, and to generally police the area in the vicinity of this City of Portsmouth building um, to ensure that it's, um, you know, uh, it's monitored. So that was, um, that was what happened, has happened 20 years ago. That's what's continued since that time. Um, at the time that the 1986 approval was, was entered into, um, there was no discussion at that point about the need for any sort of formal agreement, um, and therefore nothing was done. Uh, if we come forward to 2006, um, and in conjunction with these various issues that have arisen with the right-of-way in the, in the front, um, we determined, working with the city planning staff, that it would be best to try to, arrange, to address this issue and to obtain um, a formal arrangement recognizing that parking arrangement in the back. And so again, that's why one of the reasons why we're here. We have depicted on this amended site plan the actual parking which we use in the rear. And I have been, um, I have sent a proposal to city manager uh, Bohenko, um, which asks for permission to park in that area. I have had some exchange of correspondence with the city attorney Sullivan. Um, and he has asked that we enter into a revocable license um, in order to document this arrangement. We have agreed to do so. Um, I have also um, sent to uh, City Manager Bohenko in my draft documents a willingness to indicate that we will be responsible um, for any liability issues concerning the, pro the parking that's on private property. In addition to that, we have offered to the city um, that we would be willing to grant the city an access easement over our property in order to um, enable the city to maintain its building. I think what you'll notice here is that it's kind of an oddly configured lot. This, there's a fence that runs along, you can see sort of a cross-hatched area here. The only way to get to this city building yeah, on this side, you can get there via Rock Street, but the only way to get to this side of it is through this, this little parking area here. 
And the only way physically to do that is to cross the condominium property, which includes this parking area. So one of the things that we have suggested to the city is in return for recognizing and granting us a revocable license to park back here, we would be willing to grant them an access easement to cross our property in order to get over here to maintain their building, should that become a necessity. Um, <clears throat> I know that um, Jim Soames, one of the principals of JSA, who's one of the unit owners here, has spoken with Steve Parkinson, and he indicated some interest in this, in this proposal. Um, as I said at the beginning, um, there are really no changes to the site, no changes in operation, but I'll say for the record that um, in terms of compliance with the site review regulations, there is no change in the compliance with city ordinances. There is no change in the ability of this property to provide uh, water, sewer, uh, stormwater protection, no hazards created to abutters as a result of this proposal. Um, no development as such is taking place, therefore there will be no loss of any important features. Um, what we are seeking tonight um, is to have this board uh, grant a conditional approval uh, for the amended site plan as depicted. Obviously it would need to be conditioned upon the City Council approving the revocable license that I have just described. And <clears throat> I would assume too that the City Attorney would be called upon to um, uh, approve the license both as to form and substance and we would of course be amenable to those kinds of conditions being imposed um, on this proposal. One other technical note that I would just bring to your attention and that is when we first started out on this process the, the notes that are reflected on this plan um, talk about an exchange of easements between the city. Um, obviously these notes have been superseded by more recent discussions with the city requesting that we give a license so these notes will need to be updated to reflect that what we're talking about is a license as opposed to a, an easement. But again, we'll be happy to, to, to make those changes. Um, so with that, um, I would ask if you have any questions. And again, if you have any concerns about any of the history of, of how this whole situation arose to begin with, um, I have Jim Warner here who would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Ms. Hayden. So the um, no easements or licenses have been executed yet, right? Either with the city or with the uh, Hanover. Was it Hanover? That's Hanover? correct. That's okay. correct. Thanks. <clears throat> Any other questions for the applicant? No. Thank you. I'll now open up the public hearing. Anybody in the public wish to speak? Two for against the application. Two for or against. Third time seeing no one rise. I'll now close the public hearing. Mr. Chair, just to go over uh, some of the points, the department recommends that you grant this uh, approval. Uh, we do confirm that it is a license that is recommended, and we also concur that the three stipulations at the bottom should be incorporated in with the additional five. That being the city, uh, the license should be written so the city can revoke permission at its will. The use of city property by others should be properly compensated and that the city incurs no liability from this private use. If you do so incorporate, uh, the intent of this is that you won't have a referral back as to whether or not the planning board recommends entering into the license, completing <coughs> all that process in one action here. I would also indicate that there is very little, if any, institutional memory as to any agreement that's going back to 1984, but we're not in dispute of the facts, and this is a good way to correct the situation. Okay. Do I have a motion? I would make a motion to approve and maybe just add the condition that Sharon pointed out to uh, revise the easement notes yeah. or license notes, I guess they're going to become, to reflect the situation. Okay. I have a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Mr. Coker. Um, this may be sort of redundant, but I would be comfortable with um, – Another stipulation that the city attorney sign off on this. That'd be appropriate. He'll be reviewing the license, licensing form. Is that amenable to the maker? That is amenable. I think you could add that to condition number one easily. Okay. Appropriate vehicle licensing agreement and however and the wording is and sign approval, off or whatever. Final approval. Right. The city attorney. 
Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the chair votes aye. Thank you. I think I remember this night. Moving on to City Council referrals and requests. I'll move on to item A, the request from the Housing Partnership for an amended for an amendment to Section 10-1503 of the City Zoning Ordinance relating to residential plan unit development referred from the March 20th, 2006 City Council meeting. We can also open item B if you wish as well since they're combined. We will open item B, request from the Housing Partnership for an access easement for property located on Bedford Way, referred from the March 3rd, 2006 City Council meeting and combined with the above request for a zoning amendment by the Housing Authority. Who is here tonight? I thought we can brief where we're at. What's that? I thought we can brief where yes. we're at. Why don't you give us an update, David? Okay. The... Uh, Planning, Planning Board members received with, uh, with this packet the applicant's informational report and you've also received the department's draft rezoning report which is based on uh, their information. So at this time, this particular request has all the available information now before the board. Uh, normally what would happen at this point is a decision is made as to how best to proceed be that by scheduling a public meeting, a public hearing, or work sessions, or whatever the board or the applicant may wish. But at this point, you have all the available information that the department has, you have at this time. Is there anybody here tonight on behalf of the Housing Partnership? Uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'm Sharon Summers. I'm with Donahue, Tucker, and Shindella. Uh, we're here representing the Housing Partnership. Uh, with me also is Brian Wyatt, the Executive Director of the Housing Partnership, as well as Diane Hartley from the Housing Partnership, along with John Chagden, who's the engineer for the project from Ambit Engineering. Um, essentially, the only comment that I'd like to make um, to the board is that we appreciate the, uh, the time and effort that the planning staff has put together um, in preparing this, this initial report um, responding to the rezoning request. I think, as is noted um, throughout the, the, um, the report, there is a need for additional information um, and that following that submission of additional information, the staff contemplates providing supplemental information to this board. One of the, the comments that was made, one of the recommendations that was made um, was to have the board consider um, um, having a meeting with the technical advisory committee um, as a work session. Um, we would embrace that opportunity. I guess the only sort of revision that we would suggest to that recommendation is to allow us to come at the earliest opportunity. I believe there's a meeting on, on May 30th um, to the technical advisory commission. Um, and uh, invite any planning board members who could attend that meeting um, in order to start the dialogue of all of the various points that are outlined in this um, rezoning report about the types of information that would be, you know, useful and, ass and assist the, 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 the staff to, to further their, um, their analysis. Essentially, what we're looking to do is to work cooperatively with the staff and the board to give the information that you need to supplement this report and move this referral along. And I think that the TAC idea is probably the best vehicle in which to start that process. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, I'd be interested to hear how the rest of the board feels, but I, I mean, my thinking was to have a work session June 15th. We had originally had a zoning uh, work session with Rick Tainer, but that we need to move that off to later in the month. So I was envisioning what I was going to propose was a work session on June 15th for the board and invite TAC to that. 
but we, we hear a, a different desire from uh, the applicant tonight, so I don't know how other board members what's, feel about that. What's the, the, excuse me, if, the, only, the only rationale for that suggestion to kind of flip the order potentially of this is that we, we just thought it might be easier for the TAC people um, to, to provide their <coughs> input as part of their regular meeting. I mean, a lot of the issues, uh, I don't know if you've had much of an opportunity to review the rezoning report that um, the staff has prepared, but a lot of the issues that are presented would come under the umbrella of, of the TAC representatives. A lot of them have to do with water issues, with soils, that kind of thing. And so the TAC input, I think, is going to be critical in terms of shaping the kinds of requests that we need to, to, to respond to to give you further information. So, again, our thinking was let's get TAC um, is, is directly involved right from the start on this, and we just thought it might be more um, accessible for them to provide that input at their regularly scheduled meeting rather than, than a night meeting at which some of them might not be able to attend. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to get – But you got the opposite problem with the planning board. How many hold planning on, board on people second. can show up in an afternoon meeting? Right. Hold on. Let, Ms. Hayden. I guess my only question on that would be what would you envision after the TAC process that then we hold another work session on June 50? I'm a little unclear on how, how you would intend to move forward from that point. I, I think that would be entirely possible, and that is very much what we would envision. I mean, the, the, TAC, um, the TAC meeting would be sort of the first of, of probably several, potentially several work sessions to try to flesh out the kind of information that is required to provide to the staff in order to allow them to supplement this report. So, yes, absolutely, the June 15th would be contemplated as a work session as well. Thanks. Okay. I'd like to get other input from the board members. Anybody else have any other input? No? I'm in agreement. I'd, I'd like to – I think I'd like to have a work session on the 15th with TAC. I, I think that that would be a, a good first step. It would be the evening of the 15th. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So we could meet at 6 o'clock perhaps, David? Sure. Um, we can arrange to have the tech committee here and available for uh, the board. Okay. Is that a I'll make a motion to uh, invite TAC to June 15th planning board meeting at 6 o'clock, and that would be to – and that would include both items A and B. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The chair votes aye. Thank you. Moving on to old business, item A, planning board appointment to the Historic District Commission. And Mr. Chairman, I recommend, unless somebody jumps up in the next five seconds, that you table this to the uh, June meeting so we can have some discussion. So moved. <laughs> How about the new guy? Moved in. Yeah, he doesn't know about it yet, but we'll be meeting with him. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the chair votes aye. Moving on to... <laughs> Item 4, amended site plan review. <laughs> Item A, property located at 616 Congress Street, addition of a grease trap. David? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, applicant for this project has indicated that a restaurant-type use will go in. At that point, the city has required that a grease trap go in or that no waivers be granted. The plan has been amended to show a grease trap that conforms to all city requirements. We're letting you know that that grease trap is in, and we're proposing to do this as an amendment that the staff has approved, but we'd like to let you know that unless you have any particular concern. We view this very positively. No waivers were granted. A grease trap is in a new building, uh, probably as it should have been from, initial, from the initial point. Okay. No action required unless somebody wants us to do something different. Uh, the property located at 3002 Lafayette Road. There is a minor amendment, which I'm hoping Lucy might be able to speak to a little better than I am because I've got it confused with another project. Sure. This is a project that was a uh, dry cleaning laundry establishment that was being built on the lot where the former McDonald's meat market was. Uh, they are having a small portion of it as a basement area for their mechanicals. And the building code is requiring they have two means of egress. One will be inside. They're proposing to do an external stairway. And they're also including in that as a double door that they can get the equipment down into the basement area by a crane if necessary. Everything will be less than 18 inches uh, in height, so it doesn't uh, – setbacks and coverage aren't a problem. 
and it will be designed in a manner to meet the building code and give them a second means of egress, entrance and egress to the basement. So we felt that was also a minor amendment that could be approved. No, no action necessary unless the board member has a question. I will add that the uh, this project at the moment work is not progressing because there is a condition still outstanding from the original approval and that is not a, uh, affected by any action here. Mr. Coviello. Is there a uh, graphical error on the drawing here, the opening doors into a stairway? That, that would be a building issue that I know Roger's been working with them, Rick, but. I think the idea is that the, uh, the stairs, I may get this slightly wrong, but the idea is that when they're moving equipment in, it isn't going to be functioning as a stairwell. Once the equipment is in and located, then the doors are such and it's oriented such that the stairs are back in so that it serves as a stairwell. They're, I think they're actually going to lift the stairs out. Mm. This is if you have to, you know, Once in replace, every 10 years. Or yeah, a, a large piece of I guess the equipment um, weighs boilers or something like that. <laughs> the idea of carrying two tons down a stair was not viewed very effectively. Well, I saw it, I had to ask. Mm. Sort okay. of glad you did. <laughs> Gets it on the record, but. You all set? What's up? Uh, before we call the motion for adjournment, just like to remind everybody that we're going to convene a new meeting on May 25th at 7 o'clock. So, Ms. Hayden. And if it's acceptable to the board, we'd like to do a work session on the zoning ordinance with um, Rick Tainer on June 22nd. Mm. If that, uh, it's becoming a habit. I know. You guys got lots of work to do on the zoning ordinance. We originally had that scheduled for June 15th, but if the housing partnership takes that slot, we can move that back a week. What time? Seven. Yes. Seven. 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 Mr. Coker. Uh, just a question about next week. Um, I think next week is going to be a rather involved um, hearing. Awesome. The, notice, the notice that said there are two planning board meetings, all materials for both meetings are included in this packet. Is that correct? We, we have nothing that will be given to us. You will receive your packet for the next meeting. It will probably be in the mail Monday. Okay. Yep. You do not have it at this time. One of the reasons for separating it was so that the information could be compiled. Okay. Good. Thank you. With that being said, do I have a mo so moved. motion for adjournment? Yeah, and before everyone leaves, since almost everyone's here, we are prepared to take a picture. Then when we get another meeting, when Ray's here, we will take another picture. But right now, if we could, we'd like you to gather so we can get a picture for the web page. You just Photoshop him in. So, good night. We'll talk to you about how to do that. <laughs>